Hi, my name is Dr. John Duyard, and I want to talk to you today about something called brain atrophy, literally our brain shrinking in size. Now, new studies are telling us that this is happening insidiously to most Americans throughout their lives, and we don't even realize it. Studies have shown that as the brain volume decreases, as your brain becomes smaller, we lose cognitive function. But new studies show that this shrinking of our brain literally increases the risk of cardiovascular issues. It actually increases the risk of mood instability by a whopping 181% in one study. And it also showed that it increased the risk of early deaths from any cause by 70% in another study. So all of a sudden, it's not just about losing some cognitive function, it is a direct link to the risk of many other functions in our body. Now, the cause of this is being understood more and more by researchers, and the cool thing is that researchers think that this can be reversed, which is a very cool thing. The two causes that seem to jump off the page for me was number one, it has to do with a certain aspect of our digestion, which I wanna talk about in a minute, and also blood sugar, like the next big epidemic. Studies have shown that when the blood sugar levels increase within the normal range, it's directly linked to shrinking of our brain volume. It's also directly linked to decreased cognitive function. In one study by the New England Journal of Medicine, it showed that, that when folks have blood sugars, fasting blood sugars at 95 milligrams per deciliter, which is still within the normal range, you have an increased risk of cognitive function later on in life. So there's many studies linking blood sugar to the increased risk of cognitive function decline, and now we know a decreased brain volume, which directly links to car cardiovascular issues, mood instability, and even early death, which is kind of a big deal. Now, so very important to become more aware of your blood sugar. One study has showed that when the hemoglobin A1C, which is a test of a three month average of your blood sugar, was a little bit high, it showed it was directly linked to decreased brain volume. So these are things that you can test at home. Walgreens and Walmart sell home hemoglobin A1C test kits for like 20 bucks or nine bucks, depending on how many uh, test kits are in the, in the package. So you can do that at home and see what those numbers are. A hemoglobin A1C test should be about 5.3 or below, according to you know, the most kind of updated measurements. The Western model would let you be anywhere below 5.6. Fasting blood sugars, you can do at home with a glucometer and check your blood sugar in the morning and see what that number, number is. That number should be ideally between 70 and 85 milligrams per deciliter to be optimal. Now, now, the high end of normal now is about 100 milligrams per deciliter, but we have studies that show that when blood sugar creeps up in the morning fasting within the normal range, that those increase of brain shrinkage and also cognitive function and other things are there. So it's very important not to let that happen. And you can, if you check in your blood sugar every day, you begin to sort of kind of be aware of, I went out to dinner last night, had a glass of wine, my numbers in the morning were this, I was stressed out last night, I didn't sleep, my numbers in the morning were this. You can begin to scrub a lifestyle to get those numbers down. When those numbers creep up just a little bit, they create this thing called glycation. They do a whole bunch of bad stuff, but the, but the worst thing that the sugars do is they create glycation. And this is the smoking gun. Glycation end products have been found at the sites of most degenerative concerns and issues in the body. Glycation is when sugar creep, uh, clumps together or sticks together with proteins in your blood and makes the blood very, very clumpy, particularly fond of elastin and collagen, which on the inside damages the walls of your arteries, but on the outside makes your skin wrinkle. So it's very important, low blood sugar means better skin inside and out, and also directly related to the size of our brain, which is also very, very important. I've talked about in, in recent articles about brain shrinkage related to vitamin B12 deficiencies. And it is very, very real. There's plenty of studies that show that when vitamin B12 levels are just low normal, not deficient low, low normal, directly linked to, to the brain volume beginning to shrink. And they've also shown that when you give the B12, the brain volume begins to increase again. And in one study, when you took B12, folic acid, and B6 together, it actually stopped and slowed the, the shrinking of the brain by a whopping 50% in one other study. So, so B12 is very important. But here's how it relates to digestion. Now hang in there with me for a second. B12 is the only B vitamin that's very difficult to digest. It requires a very strong stomach acid. 
The same stomach acid allows you to digest wheat and dairy and hard to digest proteins very, very well. If you don't have a strong stomach acid, you don't digest wheat and dairy very well, it's possible that you do not make another protein in your stomach called the intrinsic factor that's only made in a high acid environment whose job in life is one thing to digest B12. And if you don't have that good stomach acid, you won't make B12 and you won't deliver the B12 to your brain and for mood, stability, and cognitive function, all those good things. So, interestingly, our brain volume in many cases can be related to a lack of B12 and and that's within normal levels, just low normal, and also the inability to digest well. So pretty fascinating. And in another study, they found out that omega-3 fatty acids, you know, the EPA and DHA, which we find in fish oils, which is very, very important for us and very important for our brain. In many of the anthropological studies, they say that our, our brain tripled in size during the evolutionary process because we started eating a little bit more meat and getting more fish oil pro to fats in our brain, the DHA in particular, they say responsible for um, all this brain thinking that we do, which is uh, much different than our ancestors. So pretty cool things. And they found now that when people have higher levels of omega-3 fatty acids in their brain, guess what? Their brain volume is bigger. So you want to make sure you're up to speed with your, your, your omega-3 fatty acid supplementation, either with fish oils or with vegetarian sources of that. You want to make sure your B12 levels are up to par, and you want to make darn sure you're digesting well. And of course, the most important thing of all is check and be proactive with your blood sugar. Don't let them creep up even within the normal levels because high normal is actually showing to be the new danger. Check out the article that I wrote in detail citing all the research behind these studies and, um, and, and, uh, and that's on my website at LifeSpa.com. Thanks for listening. I'm Dr. John Pierre. This recording is brought to you by LifeSpa, where ancient Ayurvedic wisdom meets modern science. Get access to free health video newsletters by Dr. John at LifeSpa.com. These statements have not been evaluated by the FDA. These products are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease.